And here's what a good seam should look like. You shouldn't see any dirt uh, coming out of this. Uh, you shouldn't be able to get your fingernail down into it. And when it gets really good, you can't even really see where the seam is. It just looks like one continuous piece of uh, fiberglass there, but there's the there's the hole and then there's the deck. And so about halfway down, there's a little seam. If you see it split and you see a bunch of dirt coming out of it, especially around a corner or something, and it just seems like it's swollen up bigger than other parts. This, like this part's mushroom just a little bit. You can see where it had a little, a little ding there. Then you start watching to see if there's a lot of dirt accumulated which is an indication of usually when water drips out of the boat and the dirt catches there. Um, wave seems looking pretty good. We didn't see any bubbles on the first bubble test, but you know, maybe because it was so tight the water didn't get in here to check it. So now that this uh, trim is off, we'll go back around with the uh, little squirt bottle with some Dawn dishwashing liquid and some water and blow some air into one of the uh, one of the uh, drains here and see what comes out. A lot of places where we see leaks are on the on the fat side here, where it's four feet across, where the boat gets sat on the edge or banged into something, and that seam will split open, and uh, we'll let water in there. Really, where we see it the most is um, right up in here and on the bow where people run into things they can split that seam especially if you hit it on the bow it might actually pop it right back in here and then when, when you go sailing you get water over the bow and it comes in and it goes over and it goes right into the seam uh, not a big deal sometimes if you're unless you're one of the sailors that has the uh, rail in the water all the time and then you can just be Spending that whole time, you know, taking water in right down in there and then wonder where your water came from. You know what a lot of racers do? Because they know there's 30 plus holes in these boats as they just go ahead and put one of these inspection ports in. So when they're done, they can look down in there and see if they got any water. Which we don't today because we dried it out. But you do see another problem we have, this block is falling down and it's loose so we're gonna what we'll do eventually is put the boat on its side come in there with a little berber mallet reach up in there and tap it back into position and then take some of that two-part expanding foam and mix it up and dump it in there there's some of the old foam there we're going to take uh, some of that out i could split the deck and go in there and do it but uh, since the seam is so nice i don't want to do that if I was going to have to do seam work anyway, then uh, that's how I would get to the block, and that's how the the pros did it back before they were uh, these inspection ports were uh, prevalent. But, you know, now that the boats have been around for 54 years, you know, it's it, uh, and that's what kind of the industry norm is to put those ports in. It's not such a big deal as it used to be to to just go ahead and have an inspection port on there flip side of that is notice today we're leaking the sealants failed around the port so now we got to go in and redo the sealant but uh, why are those blocks important there's three of them in here there's one up here on either side there's port and starboard block then there's one up in the bow that helps provide the rigid structure for this hole so it just doesn't haul so it doesn't flex up and down and what we've got going on in the bottom on the starboard side is you can you can just reach up there and push it up and down so when you hit something you get kind of that oil can or like it's ironing board uh, flapping sound and we'll go back around here on the port side where the block is still in place when you go to push it up you can lift the boat and the the hole doesn't uh, 
flex. It's just my, my finger flexes. So we'll get the block fixed. We'll get, um, we took the trim off because we're going to be sanding on these sides. We want to get that little cove underneath there. There's some uh, chippy paint down in there, and it's the easiest way to do it is to uh, just take that off. The way we spin you around again. The way we got the trim off was just took an um, eighth inch rivet in there, it's mushroomed out a little bit, so we went one size up to 964 drill bit. Came down right in the center of the rivet and drilled it. Took out the rivet head and the little barrel underneath. Usually you can get most of them out. We did have, uh, one of them did uh, pull out. What happened here is there's still, still part of that rivet left in there. So my choice was to either have this pull out or else to have this hole super big. And I chose to just deal with this. We'll clean that up a little bit and put some thickened epoxy in there and then just re-drill it. But, uh, so that's it. Now one of the things you may find on some boats, I said that's it, but it's not it, is uh, some of the, when the quality control was really good at Alcourt and they were making all kinds of money like in the 60s and early 70s, they, um, your boat would come and it would have three pieces of trim. You'd have a bow piece, then you'd have the two uh, side stern pieces and the port and starboard. So three pieces all cut nice, all cut the same, you know, same mirror image. And then when they started running into cost issues or trying to cut cost, they would take leftover pieces of trim and you might get a boat with five or six, you know, different size pieces of trim on there. But it all does the same thing. And what the trim is there for is just to uh, make the boat look a little nicer and it helps primary function is to protect this seam so when you do run into something the uh, trim takes the brunt of the impact and spreads it you know along the seam over distance as opposed to that seam itself taking it and then uh, splitting open so like something something happened here I don't know if they backed into something fast or someone else hit them from behind and that a little chunk of fiberglass to be taken out there so the rest of it looks pretty good so and this boat's a 1965 it would have come with just a solid color but when Captain Jack painted it he wanted it uh, a medium blue with a couple of stripes on it so he chose his double stripe was what he liked you notice uh, most of the boats nowadays uh, the majority of them have the triple stripe some have a stripe going longitudinally right down the middle. The uh, 1968 boat had this double stripe up front that's a little bit wider. It was red and blue, but there was nothing on the stern. The, uh, the stripes started showing up about 1967. The doubles on the bow, and then the triples started showing up 71 or so. And then a few years later, it was triples all the way, uh, you know, bow and stern. So. That's what's going on with the 1965 Alcourt Sunfish Wave, the, the Skipper's Flagship.